Not a few people who do good to other fellow humans, but by giving the impression that God is unfair, so that in their kindness contains wickedness towards God. Let's walk through it. If people do good or evil without motivation and self-interest, certainly they don't realize that what they are doing is good or evil. Because if they do it with motivation, they certainly realize what they do is good or evil. As an example, when they do good deed for the house of God, for God's ministers, or for servants of God, then of course they realize that they want to do good for God. But it is different from if they do good or evil towards a person who is in a mission walking the process of the way of the cross without them knowing. Then turns out, what they do is actually for God. Then will their deed be repaid by God, by receiving heaven as a reward? The new heaven and the new earth and the kingdom of the new Jerusalem are not that cheap, and they are not to become a reward. One example that we have experienced personally. I was falsely accused at the time when I was walking the process of the way of the cross, and there was not a single person who knew it only in spirit realm, especially the devil, who knew it. Therefore, trial and temptations occurred. Tragically, during my time of ministry, the false accusation came from the pastor's wife herself. My condition at that time was like a silent lamb. However, there was a servant of God who was also our friend, giving me a support. He believed that I was not like what I was falsely accused of. Because I followed Jesus and walked the way of the cross, problems came simultaneously. There was a big problem in our family as well, so the burden was very heavy for me. But the servant of God did not know it. As a servant of God, his support strengthened me. I made a commitment in front of God right then that I will never forget this servant of God, who was not aware that his defending me made Jesus indebted. For I was naked and ye clothed me. His defending me became very important to me, who at that time had not understood the meaning of life in God's word. Though many years had passed, myself and God never forget what the servant of God had done. When the servant of God too experienced big problems, I was given a vision by the Holy Spirit to pray for him. Not just once, but many times, I had to pray for the problems he faced, so that it made the servant of God felt he was always right and was always defended by God. But more and more, he is losing his sincerity now, and instead. He always likes to create sensations, create controversy that becomes debates and torments other fellow believers who hear the game he plays in understanding the word of God that he describes by using the original language, so that he provokes debates between fellow believers. However, he continually always ups and downs in his mentality. Another example, during our time when walking the process of the cross. At the time, my husband was looking for a job, choosing between jobs. The job offered was working at a gambling place with a high salary. But because we were guarding to live a holy life for God, so we rejected it. There was only a choice to work at a supermarket with a very minimal salary. For grocery shopping, we had to wait for goods with damaged packaging, which is discounted to half price, specifically for employees of that supermarket. When I told my husband that we needed one can of cooking oil, of course by waiting for the one with damaged packaging, then one of my husband's co-worker knew that we needed it. Then he asked, "How many cans do you need?" "Just one." My husband answered, 
Right away, he took a can and bang it to the wall, so it became dented. So it could be bought half price by employee. This friend of my husband, with the appearance of a rough person, without he realized it, through us he did a good deed for God. Therefore, without being realized, we had made God indebted because of us. For I was in hunger, and ye gave me meat. This person was blessed by God. Certainly, that person's kindness was paid in full. Until today, we always remember his deed. We still make it as a testimony. Please read Mark fourteen six to nine. And Jesus said, "Let her alone. Why trouble ye her? She hath wrought a good work on me. For ye have the poor with you always." And whensoever ye will, ye may do them good, but me ye have not always. She hath done what she could. She is come aforehand to anoint my body to the burying. Verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also that she hath done shall be spoken of for a memorial of her. Automatically. We always mention about them in every testimony of our journey in the process of walking the cross with Jesus. So the reward of kindness will surely be repaid with kindness. Blessing others will also be repaid with being blessed. Thus, heaven, the new heaven and the new earth, is not to be made as a reward. It's like looking down on the dignity of the kingdom of God. In fact, those good and righteous people consider Jesus as a pagan ghost. If Jesus led them into heaven with a welcoming word, "Hallelujah," they will surely reject it. They don't know Jesus and consider his voice as the voice of the pagan ghost. Please read Hebrews nine twenty-five to twenty-eight. Nor yet that he should offer himself often, as the high priest entereth into the holy place every year with blood of others. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for Him shall He appear the second time without sin unto salvation. For only the sheep who recognize the voice of the shepherd, they are the ones who always wait for the coming of their master to shepherd them. These are the ones who wait for Him at the time of Jesus' coming in this end times. They will receive salvation, the meaning of eternal life. Thus, to be in heaven is not for people who only because of their good deeds, but not born again of water and also not born again of blood. This is only to become a debate and looking for sensation. Please read Jeremiah twenty-three sixteen to twenty-one. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. Hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you, that make you vain. They speak a vision of their own heart, and not out of the mouth of the Lord. They say still unto them that despise me, the Lord hath said, Ye shall have peace. And they say unto every one that walketh after the imagination of his own heart, No evil shall come upon you. For who hath stood in the counsel of the Lord and hath perceived and heard His word? Who hath marked his word and heard it? Behold, a whirlwind of the Lord is gone forth in fury. Even a grievous whirlwind, it shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked. The anger of the Lord shall not return until he have executed, until he have performed the thoughts of his heart. In the latter days, ye shall consider it perfectly. I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. Why did it end up like this? This is the consequences of not yet entering into the process of being born of the meaning of live by the Spirit. So, when understanding the Word of God, 
they will not understand it if they have not entered into the day of rest. Thus, they are still caged based on the concept of life of returning favor, according to their logic. If they have dared to be ahead by discussing the spirit realm, then that's because they have become as thieves. Please read Titus 3, 4-7. But after that the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy He saved us, by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which He shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by His grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. As the people who have the right to receive eternal life, only through the washing of born again of water, and then those who are sealed, born also of blood. If people who do good deeds and live righteously, but are not willing to accept Jesus, then where do they go when they die? Please read Psalm 49, 12 to 21. Nevertheless, man being in honor abideth not. He is like the beasts that perish. This their way is their folly, yet their posterity approve their sayings, Selah. Like sheep they are laid in the grave, death shall feed on them, and the upright shall have dominion over them in the morning, and their beauty shall consume in the grave from their dwelling. But God will redeem my soul from the power of the grave, for he shall receive me, Selah. Be not thou afraid when one is made rich, when the glory of his house is increased, for when he dieth he shall carry nothing away. His glory shall not descend after him. Though while he lived he blessed his soul, and men will praise thee when thou doest well to thyself, he shall go to the generation of his fathers. They shall never see light. Man that is in honor and understandeth not is like the beasts that perish. For all the good deeds that man does, which he does to others, indeed, all contain motivation. They do not realize it. It is for the sake of keeping their image as good people. Because outside the word of God, even kindness does not become righteous. But what is born of the word of God surely does what is good and righteous. Please read. Ecclesiastes 12, 7-8 Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the Spirit shall return unto God who gave it. Vanity of vanities, saith the preacher, all is vanity. Everything that is from flesh and blood is from the ground, returns to become dust. But the Spirit gives life. Therefore, for those who have the Spirit, will return to the dwelling place of the Father, which is the new heaven and the new earth, and also the new Jerusalem. Let us prove it. Please read Genesis 3:19. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground, for out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. Adam and Eve were not evil people, because they were the caregivers of all the animals in the Garden of Eden. Although doing good deeds towards their fellow human, however, they did not realize that their disobedience were considered as evil before God, and therefore they returned to their nature. Likewise, is the faith of people who are good but do not know their God. They do not have the spirit, the meaning of eternal life. They are like Adam and Eve who were foolish. In these end times, what is being waited for by God's people who consider themselves as righteous people, while mankind and other religions are waiting for their Messiah to come? Please read Revelation 5, 8-10. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. 
and they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book, and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain, and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred, and tongue, and people, and nation, and hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. If they are as righteous people, of course, what they are waiting for is the time of revenge. Because as righteous people, they certainly must have experienced prosecutions in their souls and mentality. However, the problem in this end times, those who confess as righteous people, in fact, are waiting for the repentance of the physical nation of Israel. Well, in fact, in this end times, the coming of Jesus is not to work on the process of redemption and no longer brings a sacrifice. Why those who feel as righteous people in this end times can be different in their hopes. Why so? It is because they are being obsessed by their spiritual ambition. In their hopes, they become in line with the religions in this world because they want their religion to be the ruler of the world. For that reason, the hope of a religion towards their Messiah is to be the ruler of this world. Since inside their souls, they never feel oppressed and prosecuted while living in this world, because they have become in line and enjoy the situation of this world, they consider it as normal. Please read 1 Thessalonians 5, 7 to 11. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us, who are of the day, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore comfort yourselves together, and edify one another, even as also ye do. In fact, in this end times, it is the time for the prayers of the righteous people, the bowl to be poured out. For this all must repent, the children of God as the lost lambs, not because of their faith, but from within their hopes that is led astray. So they become the lost lambs. In order for them to repent soon, because what is coming first is revenge, do not make these times wasted, if not wholeheartedly becoming in line with the hope of the prayers of the righteous people. But if they continue to hope for the repentance of the physical nation of Israel, they become double-minded. Amen.